Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to another latest from me and Lyman. I do hope you're well and today I'm with Master Hari G. I'm so excited to work with her, Cosmic Gypsy. And um, I know a lot of you have been waiting for this. So ooh, we're going to have wonderful talks today about empowerment, about the new earth and what it means to be in that and what is required of us. And basically bringing everything into a now and really being consistent in that so i'm going to pass over to jen and see what see what she's got to say about it and then i'm going to jump in there and you know just work together to see what comes out go with the flow and hopefully by the end of this you'll be really empowered and um know know how to approach any test that you may have during this process what do you think jen yeah, I just I just wanted to ask you what is it that you wanted to focus on our conversation on particularly in this in this uh, thing? Yeah, I think it's really important that we talk about the present moment and empowerment in that and the fact that we're co-creating all the time. Because I know when we talked, when we spoke before, you were saying to me how very relevant it is that we are in constant creativity and that we're always we always have a choice, no matter where we are, to choose to manifest the best and about how do we really get into that what is required of us what's the best technique to use how can we when we're dicking off in our mental bodies and we do do it right we go in and out and there's nothing wrong with that about really keeping that consistent what what would you what would you suggest well it's like i share in all of my videos i'm always sharing about my spiritual practice and um my spiritual practice is i stop thinking whenever i naturally remember to do so i'll just jump off the thought train and i'll just bring my awareness to the present moment so whether i'm thinking the most stimulating thought exciting thought scary thought worrying thought boring thought mundane it doesn't matter whatever the thought i've trained myself to just jump off the thought train and bring my awareness to to the present moment and um and, and really every time you do that what you're doing is you're you're saying you're communicating to your egoic consciousness you are no longer in control because if we don't do that then it, it continues this perpetual identification with the with the samsaric realm with the egoic consciousness and um and if that is the case then we will never ascend we will never reach enlightenment and if if you could reach enlightenment through the mental realm through the rational mind and egoic consciousness we would have a, a planet of eight billion enlightened people but we don't so clearly that strategy doesn't work so the strategy that I work with the, the spiritual practice that I work with is that whenever I naturally remember to do so I just jump off the thought train and I just bring my awareness to the present moment and I feel the carpet under my toes I look at the color of the wallpaper or I look outside and you know check out check out what's going on in the sky but the, the point is I prioritize that over all thoughts no matter even if I'm having the most enlightened fifth dimensional thought of my whole entire life if I remember in that moment to, to take a short moment I will and I will prioritize that yeah. and what I found is that each time I do that each time I jump off the thought train and and prioritize present moment awareness I, I seem to access the most deepest and profoundest levels of clarity within my own consciousness and it is coming from such a deep and such a pristine place within myself that um and you can never ever reach that depth of clarity through the rational mind so um yeah it's phenomenal and it and it also it's like we, we get so, like, if, if we've got problems and stuff like that, we're so trained and we're so conditioned to, to sort of go round and round and round on the, on the hamster's wheel, like, trying to find a solution. And, and but, but you're dealing with the problem at the level of the problem, at the same kind of, like, vibration that the problem's occurring. So what I've trained myself to do is just to jump off the thought train, prioritise resting as awareness for short moments. And then what I've discovered, I mean, like, this has been my practice for five years now, so I'm quite... I'm, quite well seasoned in practice but what I found is that you access solutions um, that actually come from the super consciousness field from, from from the field of the unconscious and the super consciousness field and so they are way more proficient they are way more powerful and profound than anything that your, your than your rational mind can come up with yeah no I completely agree with that absolutely 100% it's all about coming into now and a lot of it is trust and knowing that there is no destination really there's only a constant now because if That's you right. think if you think there's a destination right you're not there because what we're doing is we're coming into that no separation and to think there's a destination means there is something outside there is a distance there is a time frame no and we've always been empowered 
we've always been we've always been one we've always been whole there's no none of this is happening and the more we come into that the more we're actually co-creating and so with that in mind should we talk about the new earth and what's what's required of us in the new uh, earth? Yeah, yeah i just want to say like for myself like as a sort of no, I wouldn't, in the old paradigm, you'd call me a spiritual teacher. In the new paradigm, you'd call me a reminder. I'm a reminder of that yeah. you already know. And so, like, for a lot of my work is, you know, is around the whole uh, twin, the reality of the twin souls. But in a way, like, in many ways, it's like, that's kind of like a carrot that I'm sort of like dangling to everyone because ultimately the goal is awakening as is enlightenment is to reach, reach spiritual mastery. Mm -hmm. And the, the way that we're sort of like being brought to this conversation and showing up to do this work, because it is work to get to that place of, of pretty stable and fifth dimensional consciousness. Um, like that, that is the way that we sort of like the, the look people in but the thing is it's like when you do actually stabilize in, in 5d and are, are in, in enlightened consciousness then then you reach a you reach a place where you're not even searching you're not even seeking you're not even looking for your twin you are just absolutely 100 on your mission and if you happen to manifest a union with your twin in this lifetime that's great and that's that, that, that's a cherry that is literally the cherry on top but but the thing is, it's like we need to get people to have this conversation about the necessity of spiritual enlightenment. And I think in many ways, my way of, of luring people in is by speaking about the twin soul reality, because it is a reality. But it, it's the it's the, the prize at the end or it's the gift that comes at the end when you truly, truly stabilize in your own spiritual mastery. And I try to emphasize that in all my writings, in all my videos, in every, all my offerings, that the goal has got to be your own spiritual enlightenment and then from that place you, you reach that that you reach that place where you're not even really like bothered anymore and i'm and i'm you know i'm pretty much there like 99 i might have a little moment where i'm like oh i quite fancy my twin like, you know i was quite fancy and manifesting but it's not it's definitely not my predominant um like emotion like i'm just so on my mission and i'm so anchored in present moment awareness and in service that that it's, it's inevitable. And even if it's not, even if it doesn't happen in this lifetime, well, then that's God's will. And so be it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm totally, totally, um, you know, um, surrendered to, to God's will. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, not, that's exactly how I feel. I feel like the most important thing is to become whole within, to come into that awareness that you've already been there. It's like yeah. we build it up while we believe that there's separation and there's time. But once that empowerment really comes in, we realize, actually, I've always been like this. I've always been perfect. There is no good or bad. There is no like a duck. I've always been perfect. Bringing it into a now, the more we're whole within and unified within, the more we attract to us people that are in that unity space. And so this is what we're doing now, aren't we, Jim? We're coming together as... Yeah people to help trigger remembrance in you because I feel the same about that. We, we all know, we all know everything, all of us. Just we know everything, oh God, yeah, absolutely. We do, we just need a yeah. little, oh yeah, I remember that. There is no hierarchy, there is no spoon, there's no better than now. We're all one yeah. and it's, it's so beautiful and amazing. And I know that a lot of our like soul groups that are working together right now, we're really templating this unity in terms of business, the new business paradigm, how we're working together. And as we come together and support each other, we're templating that for others to come in. And it's just, it's incredible what we're, what we're doing on the earth right now. It's just, and I'm so honored to be working with you, Jen. Like I'm, you're a very beautiful, clever lady. Like I've, I've come to your installments and gone, I love this woman. She's so free. She's so empowered. She's so there. She's so there. And we had a little, a little session together and you activated some really strong empowerment codes in me. And since then I went, I don't need no twin. I can manifest a twin if I want. Like I went off and was like, oh, I'm good. I can... You know, not in an egocentric way, but in a way that is so empowered that you realize you don't need an illusory expression to complete, to finish the process, to do whatever. You're empowered to do it on your own. And this is it. And you need to be there. That's it's complete surrender and detachment, isn't it, Jen? It's, it's what's, yeah. what's required of us, you know? Absolutely. No, it sounds like you've had like a, a really, really important breakthrough, Sean, and that's um, that's going to reverberate in, in everyone that comes into your field on any any level through your videos, through your work, and um, it's absolutely amazing. And um, 
yeah it's it is it is the cherry on top and um, but it gets people to start having this conversation about about what is spiritual mastery and and how do i attain that then then it, then it is a really really uh, amazing thing but even on itself though i mean the whole twin soul like it is a reality it's like we were created and this is all this is all held within the fibonacci sequence like the truth about the twin souls is um you know the mysteries are hidden in plain sight as they always say and so if you if you actually look at the Fibonacci sequence is that it goes to zero, one, one, then it goes two, three, five, eight, etc., etc., etc. And the zero represents the zero point field of all creation, the space where all timelines merge and meet, and the space where all everything is created throughout all dimensional realities is is created and, and coexists within the zero point field. And so from the zero point field, which is representative of the, the zero, the fall in the tarot is, is the zero. And then from that, you've got the, the, the magician, which is number one, and then you've got the high priestess, which is number two, and that is the one and the one, and that is the divine masculine and the divine feminine. So from the zero point field of all creation, what sprung forth was this unit of masculine and feminine energy. So if God, God wasn't like, oh, I'm just going to create, I'm just going to create a man, and um, and like seven thousand million years later, going, oh, right, oh, I think I'll create a woman. Do you know what I mean? It's like that we are, they are created simultaneously twin souls are two sides of the same coin you can't create one side of a coin it's just not possible so that, that everything that i'm saying I, i'm not in any way negating in fact i'm always empowering the reality the fact that twin souls this is real and this is what's been hidden from us you know and if you go into the highest degrees of masonry this is what they know they know all about twin souls they know all about the divine mother and the divine feminine and the divine masculine and you know so this is this is the truth that's been hidden from us all but but it's time for these for these mysteries to be uh, reclaimed by all of god's children and you know even if you go into these masonic lodges you know all of the floors are like black and white well that represents masculine and feminine so it's like it's all about the masculine and feminine like that is the ultimate mystery revealed yeah. so that's not to say uh it, it's like it's, it's an absolute reality but the quest for the beloved for the for the counterpart it's not an external quest it's an internal quest you can only unite with your twin on the inner planes like it has to be activated on the on the etheric the esoteric levels that is where the inner alchemical marriage is activated and then as the primary axiom of creation is as it is within, so it is without. Yes. Within, so it is without. So we, we, we um, and this is all to do with our own Kundalini energy, masculine and feminine um, serpents or dragons at the base of our spine. And when they're in their dormant state, that represents duality consciousness, that separation, this idea of separation. But when they awaken, when they get triggered on this ascension path and they, whether that be through a teacher or meeting your twin or a beautiful song or a beautiful view, something at some point will trigger those Kundalini's. And then they, they sort of like, they wake up after their long slumber and go, oh, oh, there you are. And then they rush together at the base of the spine. And that represents oneness, wholeness and unity. And that is, and then they then they bring up, do their whole ascent up the spine, and they come through the crown after cleaning all of the dross, all of the old templates, all the old programming from our, our ancestral lineage, from all our past lives. It's this burning off, this deep, deep purification comes out through the crown, which is representative of the violet, which is the, the color of transmutation. And then, and then, you know, and then that activates the, the circular motion of one's own Kundalini energy. And that's it, you're whole and complete. And, and that's, that is what it's all about. And so my work is to, is to assist people to activate that, their own inner, inner alchemical marriage the hero scamos within and that is how you unite with your twin soul by you do the work you wake up spiritually and that means you awaken your kundalini energy yeah yeah it's turning the, the lead into gold isn't it turning lead into gold that's right yeah it's quite a tough process really when you start but then as you start empowering yourself and becoming more present you can actually override those frequencies which are coming up from within you which don't even really exist today jen come on because time doesn't exist none of it does really and this is what doesn't exist we're enjoying we're enjoying an experience and yet we're in no time where it doesn't even exist and yet we're creating it in the now right because we're already there it's it it's quite it can be quite 
intense to to see it like that and obviously as you you integrate the higher mind levels polarity mind i'm separate unity mind i'm one i'm free mind i'm free to express however i want it's completely fine as you integrate those levels you can as those layers come up within you for clearing the chakras are releasing it becomes easier to step up and out almost of yourself the human aspect the egoic mind and then observe what's going on rather than participate in it and i think humanity's issues all of us have been that we've been so reactive and so asleep we've been indulging in these energies and you know reacting to them rather than going oh yeah this is just fear let it go oh this is just sadness let it go the art of observation and conscious detachment of that that energy which is coming up and that's the mastery isn't it the mastery is to rise above whatever you're feeling and bring yourself back into a now into no thought no time presence it can be quite difficult when you start, but it, it does get easier, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. It, it's, it's all about becoming the observer. It's like, until you, you know, until you really, really commit to a spiritual practice, then when you have emotions or visitors, I like to call them visitors, such as worry or fear or, or, or whatever it is, then what happens is if we don't have a spiritual practice, these visitors come and knock on the door and... And, um, and then we sort of like, we're so nice, we kind of like let them in. And, um, and, then, and then they come in and they enter the mansion of our house, of our soul, of who we truly are, our divine self. And then they just start graffitiing, they start destroying the gas. They just like, they just like, they take over. And, um, you know, but really they're visitors. They're visitors. Mm. And, and who I am and who you are, you, you are the host. So, and another really good analogy that I always work with is that of like, who I am is like the blue sky. Like my divine consciousness is, is that of the blue sky. And all these thoughts and emotions and sensations, they are like, they are, they're like clouds. Now, no one's denying the fact that the clouds are in the sky, but the sky isn't going to wake up one day and go, oh my God, all this time I thought I, thought I was the sky when, when oh shit, I'm, I'm a cloud. But that's what we're doing all the time. We, as this divine, eternal consciousness, are identifying with that which is temporary, you know? And it's like we're forgetting our greatness, we're forgetting our magnificence, we're forgetting that, that we are the space in which all phenomena is yeah. allowed to arise. But the trick is, is to not identify with it. So that's not to say, like, you know, I mean, so I don't know, like, to be honest with you, because I've been in this practice for so long, I very, very rarely get those visitors anymore because I don't really think they, they know they've got no chance yeah. in getting in. <laughs> like, even if they try a little log, I'm like, you're not coming in, you're not going in, you know, so don't even bother. Um, but, but certainly when you, when you first really commit to your spiritual practice, um, you know, that you are going to, you are going to be met by a few visitors and, um, but what you just have to realize yeah. is that, you know, they're allowed to be there. No one's saying they're not allowed to be there. Like the sky isn't actually rejecting any clouds. The sky is like, yeah, I I'm up for tornadoes. I'm up for rainbows. I'm up for, you know, but it's, it's not judgmental. It's not, it's like, it will accept everything, but the sky is not going to identify and believe itself to be that which is temporary because the sky is anything but temporary. It is an eternal phenomenon that has existed for millions and millions and billions of years and it will carry on existing for billions and billions of years and that is the, that is the same as our true nature yeah no i agree with that absolutely 100 percent. it's like it's it's healthy boundaries as well isn't it it's knowing that all is all is all is one and all's all is able to express but what do you choose to allow to dictate to you do you choose to allow your your consciousness in the highest expression, your empowerment to be your reality, that which you create from that zero field, or do you allow thoughts and, and feelings and whatever to come in and go, eh, eh, eh. it's always about being more sovereign, being more present, coming into that. And I think when we were talking about the new earth and what's expected of us to create this, I think it's, are we getting interference in it somewhere? Like it keeps coming in. It's like a little, it sounds like a microphone going, like this so can we just clear yeah i think it's my end is your microphone all right yeah yeah my microphone's yeah, cool. fine let's 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 talk about the new, the new earth i think it might be mine actually because i was hearing there we go let me just pull the volume down i think i, I think i might need to take this into repair but now i'm going to manifest actually no it's perfectly fine right and so it's as simple as that just choosing a different reality choosing to create what you want 
this is it. And if you don't see it straight away, then maybe your frequency isn't high enough or you're not integrated enough or you're not, but it's, but it's happening. And the, the thoughts we create, like everything we think about is manifested somewhere. And then we're given a chance to choose again whether or not we want to interact with it aren't we? Whether we see ourselves as more sovereign than it or whether it's going to come in. And, and so I feel like this is a lot of the, the testing. When you're being tested by this, tested by that, and it keeps coming around, it's because you're not choosing to be, I mean, there are many aspects to it. Obviously there's clearings to, and it's a bit like an onion, but you know, you've always got to choose to be more empowered every single time until eventually that will just go. And you're like, what, what is this? This is irrelevant. Mm. I've been going into that, Jen. I've been coming into this this is irrelevant. This is irrelevant. It's just irrelevant. Like, because, because I'm in a space of co-creation and let's talk about the fact that when you raise frequency and you become more into that instant manifestation, that you really got to be careful, not careful because I don't want to do fear mongering, mindful. You've got to be mindful about what you're, what you're creating, what you're putting your intention into. And when we spoke before, we said about in the new earth, we want to create a space of peace, harmony, love, not duality separation and so the new earth is about it's being created in a now moment isn't it and it's being created from that unity from that space where you're in the zero point where you're empowered where you're able to override the low expressions of self in every moment every thought where deed has to come from that space of highest expression and this we spoke about that didn't we so do you want to do you want to say something about that well, like, you know, the way I see the, the new earth really is that my father God created Gaia as an um, profoundly magical and enchanted realm. And really, like, her true self is, is pure, absolute paradise. But, you know, what with what happened around the time of Atlantis and all the distortion energy that was allowed to enter into the electromagnetic grid, which was actually an experiment that was, that was given permission for to, to take place by Mother, Father, God, um, this, this activated um, thought forms, distorted thought forms, which were, which were able then to um, create a filter on that paradise um, um, template that Gaia truly, truly is. So what I'd like to say about the new earth is like, it's Gaia's true self. It's like, we don't have to do anything to, to activate the new earth or be in the new earth. We just need to remove all of the illusions and all of the distortions and the misperceptions and the limited ideas and limited beliefs that are blocking us from knowing and remembering like who and what Gaia truly is. And it's the same with ourselves because we are all like the micro versions of Gaia. Every single one of us are the micro versions of Gaia. And it's like, I say this in all my videos, but we are all angels. We are all angelic beings. And that is how we, we are created. We are created as divine beings. And, there's absolute, and this is across the boys in every single one of us, every blade of grass, every single, and every single thing in the whole of creation is absolutely, utterly and completely sacred. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so really, really the new earth is where we all as individuals, we need to take responsibility for this false programming and this miseducation and this deprogramming that has been enforced upon us by, by all aspects of our society, from our families, to our schools, to our media, to the pol politicians, to the religion, to absolutely every aspect of society has colluded together to um, send forth this illusion that, that we are these third dimensional sinful beings is ridiculous yeah. so really yeah so the new earth in order for us to really be be um you know like in the new earth like, like i'm in the new earth you're in the new earth yeah. just everyone else has just got to catch up you know and guys just got to catch up and and it is it is happening but it's nothing we don't need to do it's just it's more of a case of taking away that which that which is not the truth mm. and there's so much of that and so that's why our generation has has such a massive job to do because the way I see our generation particularly in this turning of this great 26,000 year cycle and about with regards to the 144,000 
Illumin Twin Souls that have volunteered to come back to assist in this in this transition at this time is um, is that you know we've all signed up to to be part of this mm -hmm. and it is absolutely imperative that we all do the work on a personal level to mm -hmm. to deprogram ourselves from these limited limited beliefs that have been enforced upon us and that is how we return to the new earth because yeah. it's our true self it's our original nature so you don't have to do anything you don't need to like do fifty thousand yoga retreats and eat raw food <laughs> yeah. or like stand on your head for like ad infinitum like that's just not necessary all you have to do is remove all of the limited beliefs because you are not a limited being i am not a limited being if i wanted to wanted to, I can live for 800 years, I can live yeah. for a thousand years, you know, because that's my birthright because I'm the embodiment of God as we all are, every single one of us are the, the sparks of, of Mother Father God so we are, we are royal we are holy, we are sovereign yeah. and we are all powerful we are all powerful, but we're so powerful that anything that we believe is what we create so if you believe this, this false idea that oh well, you know, humans only live to their 80, that's going to be it like yeah. so be it, so yeah. be it that's not my belief that's yeah. what I believe. I remember who I am. Yeah. So this is how we return back to the new earth is by we remove all of this, this false programming. And obviously there has to be a clean up operation on Gaia because um, the distorted um, egoic mind has created so much uh, pain and suffering on Gaia, particularly in our oceans, in our forests and with humanity, such as homelessness, etc., etc. So, that's not to deny the fact that there has got to be a cleanup operation. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have the technology. We have the technology and the resources to be able to sort everything out like that. Yeah. Let's us, let's us not forget that. Yeah. Well, essentially, Jen, we're all a magician. Every single person on this earth is a magician because the collective unconscious has manifested as the complete and utter, you know, what's, I love the world, but it's, it needs a bit of work, doesn't it? It really does. And so, first of all, we start one facet at a time, don't we? It's like what Michael Jackson said, change yourself first, be the change you want to see, be the change you want to see, and really be that in every moment, in it, as much as you can. And I know you you have ease and grace with this, Jen. I, at times, I have a little bit of an effort, but I have to keep bringing myself back, and that's okay. It's completely okay. It's okay to feel a little bit challenged sometimes, but just remember to bring yourself back and know how powerful you are, and choose to create what you want to see. If you don't like what you're feeling or seeing, change it, right? See out from that which you don't want to experience. Okay, I'm going to work on myself if I'm still seeing this. It's that, isn't it? It's really, if everyone on the earth focused on self and changing self and coming to balance itself at a very basic level, we would see a completely different reflection from what we're seeing now. And we're already seeing it because many, many people are awake now. There's, according to Magenta Pixie, there's millions of star seeds that are there. We're all there, like co-creating together now. This, and we're going into that paradise realm. Yeah. We are there. And we are, you know, and there may be little bits and pieces at times that come up and we just become more sovereign, let it go, clear it, shift, right? Push forward, always knowing, always being. You know, this is, this is what I feel. I don't know how you feel about that, Jen. Do you want to add to that? Is there anything else you would like to talk well, about? Well, I don't want people to think that I don't have challenges because I definitely do have challenges, but I don't, I don't necessarily have challenges with my own consciousness. I, I can more often have challenges with external things like, yes. like with my son, like if my son's having a hard time and it's really really out of my control and he's just like this little boy and he hasn't got really got a clue and he's like making all these mistakes and I'm like like it, it can break my heart and I do find that challenging yeah like, definitely as a parent and I'm a single parent and I find that I find that challenging as well like yeah. not having that that other parental support so I'm definitely not living in this bubble where I'm not having my 3d challenges because I am yeah but but I definitely, I don't, I don't have challenges with, with my own mind, with my yeah. own consciousness, because I've, I'm so practiced, I'm so well practiced in, in, my, in my spiritual practice of resting as awareness for short moments that I, I just, I'm just committed to that. So whatever's going on for me, I'll just, I'll just you know, apply my spiritual practice. And then before I know it, I'll just be like, you know, back again. But that's not to say like, you know, shit happens on the 3D and, and I, I have no control over that. Mm. Um, you know, because it's other people's timelines and other people's karmas and other people's trips. So, yeah. um, so I just wanted to kind of like throw that out there. But, you know, I definitely have reached a, a place of profound stability within my own um, fifth dimensional consciousness. And yeah. 
the, the goal is is for everyone to get to that place and the thing is is like when you are truly truly stable then your field your your field can actually influence like a vast number of people yeah. that's like yeah, it's sort of like you emit these these frequencies of of home or and, and of stability yeah. that and because we're all vibrational beings, it, like every everybody feels that and ev everybody benefits from that. Like a huge numbers of people benefit from that. So that has got to be all of our priority is to is to stabilize because a lot of people they'll have glimpses. They'll have glimpses of enlightenment, glimpses of awakening, but then before you know it, they'll go straight back into their identification of identifying with their, with their thoughts and emotions and, and this, that, and the other. And it's like they'll, they'll slip out of it and go straight back into 3D. But really, the priority has got to be to, to stabilize in, 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 this, in this higher consciousness. And I would invite everyone to really, really meditate on that or write a journal about that. Like, what is that? What does that mean to you? How can I do it? What tools are available? Like, what is the next step? I think this is really, really important in going forward that we have to be having this conversation yeah. about stabilizing, yeah. Oh, no, I completely and utterly agree with everything you said. It is so, it's so on point with what we need to do. It's about being the change we want to see and then mastering that within self and making self the most important aspect because how on earth are you going to go out there and demonstrate to people and, you know, being sovereign if you can't do it for yourself? You've, you've got to be that vibration and you've got to be there and then go out there and say to others, would you like assistance with it? Perhaps you're guided to do that. Oh, yeah, this is what worked for me. Right, so mindfulness, cognitive behavior therapies, Jen. You know, like I learned cognitive behavior therapy years and years ago when I was having problems with depression, and it's you know, always becoming completely aware, even when you're eating, really, really, you know, focusing on everything. And within that, right, if you're washing up, really focus on it's that just keeping yourself so so present and rising above and always empowering, right, not identifying or allowing mental bodies or emotional bodies to dictate your reality to you and you know and perhaps if you're seeing you know chaotic stuff isolate i'm in here isolating my ass off right i'm doing i'm doing the inner work that i need to do at this time and aspects do come up they do and i sit there and i go okay all right then distractions are okay too just acknowledge what's going on yes this is fear it is what it is let it go as long as you're you know i wouldn't say labeling it but more acknowledging it because you don't want to go into avoidance so you go it doesn't exist right it's acknowledging it oh it's okay but you're not welcome in my space and so i let you go with love right and i think a lot of people get caught up in this uh concept of really focusing 100 percent into every single drama and pain they've ever had and, and the truth is you're actually consciously creating that so a quick acknowledgement okay this this is atlantis releasing this is codependence this is abandonment okay it's just a little, a little nip, yeah. I feel that's, I mean, that was worked for me. When I really go into it, I start terrorizing myself. My brain will start going, oh, no, it wants to cling to everything. Because the ego has been running riot for however long you've been, you know, down here. Millennia. Yeah. Well, this is it. It's, it's, it's a lovely being, isn't it? But it's a bit out of control. I always likened it to, um, it's like ego's places in the garden, right? In the present. And then it's like, you know, ego goes into mum's bedroom with the lipstick and starts drawing all over the walls and like, no, no, you're placed in the garden in the present, right? It likes to be, when you're, when you're active, your ego's in, engaging in that, boom, right? You're completely focused. It's the same with meditation. If you're meditating, you're so in the now that it can't go off. It's when you start pondering things, right, that it starts to go like lipstick clumps. So. Is there anything else you would like to like to bring up or mention? Is there anything that you know you, you might be doing with your? Um... I just want to talk about, just want to talk about sovereignty for a minute. Like what yeah. is sovereignty? I'm going to bake because I'm still going through codependence with this. So that's fine. That's okay. Uh, yeah, and um, you know what what's been coming through uh, recently is this remembrance that um, you know, like like for example, like in the olden days. Like, where did the kings come from? Where did the queens come from? They, they, someone just said, like, you know, I'm the king, I'm the king. Like, that's, that's how it happened. Someone claimed it. Like, do you know what I mean? At some point, if you go back all of the, to all of the monarchies, yeah. like, they weren't born a king. They just suddenly went, hey, everyone, 
I'm the king. Yeah, who did that? Do you know who did that, Jen? Who no, decided? Like, if, you, no, if you go back through all the monarchies, you go back through all of the monarchies. You were like from from all from India, from from Scandinavia, through France, from Italy. <laughs> <Eastern. laughs> like, of course, they did. Did you think? Yes, but I'm king. I'm king, and this is oh, yeah, yeah. my land, and da da da, and whatever. So, but there's, this is a really, really powerful code in that because the thing is, what what I've been bringing through is this remembrance that when we are all born, when we all incarnate, Mother, Father, God places our crown in our field, in our yeah. etheric field, yeah. and it's it's there because it's our birthright. Because we are we we are um, you know we we are born from mother, father, God, like we are the offspring of the divine. And so that, that is our inheritance because mother, father, yeah. God is sovereign. So obviously when they give birth, their children are automatically sovereign. That's just the way it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we're all born with our, with our crowns in our etheric field now what happens for most people because they forget about their sovereignty they forget about who they truly are and they, they identify with their egoic consciousness everyone sort of suspects that they're quite holy and they're quite divine but they're all waiting for somebody to go you're really holy you're really divine i'm gonna put i'm gonna give I you know to you i know it to you so oh, yeah yeah but that's not the way it works that's not the way it works you have to claim your crown. You have to go and say, I remember, oh my God, I remember who I am. So, and then you realize in that moment, your crown has always been in your field. Yeah. And, you, in, and, and, and it's been guarded over by the elves, by the fairies, by the, by the unicorns, by all the elemental beings of nature that, that coexist in the fourth dimension. They are, they are protecting and looking yeah. after our crowns for us until the day we, we go, wow, oh my God, it's been there all along. It's been waiting for me to, to receive it. And, but, but, or, or no, it's been waiting for me to claim it. Claim, yeah. And, and, and this, is, this is what I just want to remind everyone. This is an empowerment code beyond, 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 is that it is already there. Every single one of God's children has a crown. Like there's no one, even if you're the poorest person in the world or like the flipping queen of England, you have exactly the same crown in your field. That's just the way it is because there's no hierarchy and there's no favorites and we are all yeah. one and so the whole point is is that my question is is like when are you going to claim your crown i claimed my crown i claimed my fairy crown my, my elven crown and um i've claimed it so it's like each of us on an individual level have to have that awakening have to remember um our, our sovereignty but you have to realize because so many of us and myself included i was waiting for someone to to anoint me or someone to recognize me. <laughs> and you've been waiting for like 20,000 lifetimes. Yeah. It's not gonna happen. So you have to claim it. And that's what I wanna, the message I wanna send forth to all these people that are watching this is that it's there for you. It's, it's in your field and mm -hmm. you can you can take yourself on a journey you can take yourself on a shamanic journey a visualization a meditation whatever but you can claim your crown and you can place it back on your head mm -hmm. and that's you aligning with your full full remembrance of your full sovereignty as mother father god's daughter or son and then what does that mean it means that you then have a duty you have a duty and a responsibility to remind all of your brothers and sisters about who they truly are because you have remembered who you truly are so then it's your duty then to go out and remind every single one of your and, and that is exactly the prophecy that i am fulfilling as someone that's reclaimed her crown my job now is just to remind everyone that it's yours yeah. I just say that. Uh, no, I just, uh, uh, this has been fantastic. Honestly, I think we'll, I think we'll wrap up there. I think it's a great way to end. It's just <laughs> Cosmic Gypsy, Mars Harry G, one of the most empowered women I've ever met in my life. And do excuse the, the slurring coming through. I'm going through a Mercury retrograde in my timelines, which is very strange. It's, uh, need to clear that energy now, but it's been absolutely wonderful to talk to you and, um, and it's been a giggle as well. You're, you never stop making me laugh. So thank you ever so much. Thank you so much for imparting your beautiful wisdom and everything. And hopefully everyone that's watched this will become really empowered and go, yeah, I'm going to get my crown. They're going to go off and go like this, right? It's all about the sovereignty in every moment, no matter where you are in your journey, always remembering that I think is really important, isn't it?
Yeah, and just and don't identify with these temporary visitors. That's not who you are. Yeah. You are one Father God's beloved son or daughter. You are not. You are all that is eternal. You are not that which is temporary. And every single thought you think, every single emotion you experience, they're all temporary. Do yeah. not identify with that. It's not. Yeah. Temporary. And therein lies liberation. Yeah, be more sovereign, be free, be free, be so free that you'd be completely okay to be a naked joker if you wanted to. Right? Yeah? This is it. Someone was telling me about this the other day, actually. I think it was, uh, it was Georgia. I know she's out there watching. Hi, Georgia. Um, yeah, she was saying about naked joker, and I was like, I'm not quite there yet because I've still got vanity issues that I've got to clear, but that's okay. I'm still sovereign. I'm not less sovereign for having those things to clear. I'm always sovereign. You've yeah. always been sovereign. You always are. No matter what you're clearing, you just choose to rise above and clear it and let it go. And eventually you just become more and more and more and more powerful within. Right? No one's exempt from issues. Joan is saying she still has to go through challenges and stuff, you know, not so much in her mind, but more in the physical. And it does happen. We're all doing it in different ways. And it's completely okay. And be okay with the uncomfortableness. Be okay with it. The more you let go and be okay, the easier it becomes and the more you just let it go and detach. It's just like it just drops. And I've noticed that. Just, I'm okay. Vroom. And it just goes. It just drops so fast. Yeah, like, no matter how enlightened you are, like you'll never, ever get rid of your thoughts. Like The sky will never, ever get rid of clouds. Yeah. It's just like they, they are part of, of its nature. I, I cannot get rid of my, you know, I still... I still have visitors, like worry visitors or sadness visitors, and but but I just don't identify with them. I'm just like, I was like, oh, I just recognise it. I was like, oh, you know, welcome. But there's no resistance. Um, you know, there's different strategies that you can know. There's that welcoming aspect, and then there's also like, you're not coming in. Like, yeah. sorry, you're not coming in. So there's, there's there's different strategies. But the point is, I'm not identifying with that. I, I, I but it doesn't mean that they're not there. Yeah. And that's and that's such an important thing. Like, you know, people. Have have this illusion like when you're enlightened that you don't have any sort of like negative or fearful fearful thoughts or anything like that because you do but you just don't necessarily believe them or you don't identify with them and then when you activate that then they do diminish at a very 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 radical level but it doesn't mean they go completely and who would want them to go completely that's part of this human experience is is to have these visitors i'm, I'm, I'm cool with them i'm cool with all my thoughts yeah. I'm at peace with them because I know it's not who I who I am is the vast empty silence of creation. That's who I truly, truly am. And I know that. And I'm so anchored and aligned in that knowing and remembrance that that is my predominant yeah. knowing. And that's where I believe all of us are, are, are heading to that place. Yeah, and with that, we'll be able to create a beautiful paradise, which already exists. And we're simply remembering what it was like and actually going into that remembrance that we've already created because it's already there because time doesn't exist. And now I've probably baffled your brains. But anyway, we're going to go for now. But thank you ever so much, Jen, honestly. You've got my heart and soul. And thank you so much for the beautiful empowerment codes. And let's make the intention, shall we, to send those beautiful empowerment codes out to people now, the Mother Mary code which you brought in it's just it's fantastic and i'll let you all know when jen's doing another one of her um webinars and stuff and uh, when her videos come up i'll give her a little mention as well and, um, thank you all right so we'll stop recording now take care guys thank you bye, bye. So, where are we going dear ones please come forth and add your energy to the highly auspicious 14th of February Valentine's Day portal transmission that will take place in a closed Facebook group via Facebook Live at 4.44pm UK time on that date. This is a very important moment in the 2018 calendar whereby it is appropriate to harness the potent collective twin soul energies of this day and so we are calling forth the brothers and sisters to come forward now and add your energy to this important online ceremony. In this transmission, we are being guided to assist the divine feminine aspect to clear out all last residues of doubt in her emotional and etheric body with regards to her destiny and ultimate union with her twin soul. We are also being guided to fully restore and activate the faith codes within your consciousness in order to accelerate the manifestation of your union onto the physical earthly plane. 
Please know that these upgraded faith codes have been stored and guarded over safely in the elven realms, awaiting for this moment to be fully dispensed and activated. Please know that this is a highly auspicious ceremony that you are being invited to take part in, and as such will bring forth many, many highly ordained blessings for all genuine twins, as well as, of course, preparing Gaia for her destiny as the paradise fairy tale realm that she was originally created to be. There is more that shall be revealed in due course, but please know that your presence would be most welcomed to come forward on this highly auspicious day, to send this deep personal and collective blessing into Mother Gaia. Please see below for full details of how to book to the Valentine's Day portal transmission. Namaste. dimensional aspect of your twin flame. Number two, meet and merge in the zero point field with your twin flame. Number three, the abundance MP3 activation. Number four, the self-worth MP3 activation. Number five, the Magdalene and Yeshua divine union MP3. Number six, heal and restore the Atlantis timeline. Number seven, the Violet Waterfall MP3. Number eight, the Inner Child Healing MP3. Number nine, Love Your Physical Body Reprogramming MP3. Number 10, Light Language Dispensation. Number 11, Deep Relaxation MP3. Number 12, Balancing giving and receiving. Number 13, reviving the frozen garden of your heart. Number 14, source frequency activation. And number 15, angelic T cell activation. Thank you so much for watching this video, beloveds. Please like, comment and subscribe. Many, many blessings to you all.